This is BBC News with the latest headlines for viewers in the UK and around the world. Storm Eunice hits northern Europe, killing several people. Coastal areas are buffeted by gusts and huge waves. I don't know what the actual wind speed is, but you can barely stand up in it. I'm, I'm literally at 45 degree angle. It's, it's crazy. <gasps> In the UK, the gale force winds pulled down trees, tore through buildings and caused extensive damage in parts of the country. Yeah, definitely deserved a round of applause there for those bumpy landings and relief for many. In other news this hour, as Russian drills continue near Ukraine, the United States says Russia has built up the most significant military force in Europe since the end of World War II. Hours time. International correspondents based in London will join me live to discuss what lies behind the threatened conflict over Ukraine. Find out why Minsk, Munich and Beijing are all part of the story. That's Dateline London at 7.30 here on BBC News. Hello. Uh, wherever you are in the world, welcome to BBC News. It's good to have your company. We begin this hour with Storm Eunice and the deaths of a number of people across northern Europe after the storm brought severe conditions. Here in the UK, two people have been killed by one of the worst storms to affect the country in decades. There was significant damage to buildings and millions of people were advised to stay home. Many of them did as Storm Eunice hit. Two rare red weather warnings, meaning a danger to life, were issued but have now passed. There is, though, still a serious amber warning in place for a large part of southern and middle England until 9 o'clock UK time tonight. And less severe yellow alerts for snow and ice in northern England and Scotland and in Northern Ireland. The strongest gust of wind, a blistering 122 miles an hour, was recorded on the Isle of Wight at an exposed point of the island known as the Needles. The storm has brought widespread disruption with flight and train cancellations, school closures, power cuts in many areas and major bridges having to be closed for safety. Our first report tonight is from the BBC's Danny Savage in Bristol. In Butte this morning, a local landmark oh. toppled. Oh my God, I caught that on video! Oh As Storm Eunice swept in from the Atlantic, the water was whipped into huge waves and coastal areas saw the highest gusts. I don't know what the actual wind speed is, but you can barely stand up in it. So I'm guessing it's... Um, 80, 90 miles an hour on top of the cliff. The sea state along the south coast was frightening. By lunchtime, 10% of homes in Cornwall were without power, and the Isle of Wight had recorded a gust of 122 miles per hour. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! It's okay. It's not. Nobody's hurt, and it hasn't hurt the. It's just hurt the brand new fence. Whoa. Whoa. And it wasn't just trees falling. That's the spire of St Thomas's Church in Wells being destroyed. Near Bristol, a speed limit on the M4 Prince of Wales Bridge wasn't enough to keep traffic moving. For what's thought to be the first time ever, both bridges here across the Severn estuary are closed because of the high winds. But the severe flood warnings here have now expired. Thankfully, the worst case scenario wasn't realised. Temporary flood defences were not tested, but authorities say it isn't over yet. On the back of this, we've got more rain coming, so there could be possibilities of further flooding as the week pans out. So um, let's get today out of the way first, then let's make sure that all of our infrastructure, all of our defences are still in good shape. As the day wore on, the storm headed east. For the first time ever, the southeast of England and London were also in a red warning area. To see these strong winds inland across the south, where we just don't see them that often, that has been one of the biggest factors with Storm Eunice. One of the good things about the storm is, it, is the speed at which it's actually moved through. So it zipped through pretty smartly. Uh, but all storms are different. They all are, are offer different things. But this one has been particularly intense. Red warnings are rare. To have two out uh, at the same day is, is exceptional. Gosh, it's ripped off. In London, the wind ripped off the roof of the O2 arena. 
It left a gaping hole. A thousand people had to be evacuated from the site. The north of England and Scotland escaped the worst of the storms, but did get some heavy snow. This morning's rush hour was difficult, but things have now improved. The Humber Bridge, though, was another crossing closed unusually to all traffic, rather than just high-sided vehicles. Storm Eunice will be remembered for its mountainous seas and wind damage. There were fears it could have been much worse. Danny Savage, BBC News. Let me bring you some breaking news. Um, we've just had this in uh, from our colleagues at South Today in Southampton. Um, a third death has been confirmed. Uh, police in Hampshire uh, say a man died and another was seriously injured in an accident at the height of the storm. Officers say a Mercedes pickup van hit a tree in Old Odium Road, Alton, just before midday. A man in his 20s died at the scene. Second man, also in his 20s, is being treated at Southampton General. Detectives are appealing for witnesses for that death at Old Odium in uh, near Alton, on the Old Odium Road at Alton at uh, this lunchtime. In Wales, all train services were cancelled for the first time time ever on Friday and the majority of schools were closed. Tens of thousands of homes were left without power, with units damaging homes and properties. Our correspondent Thomas Morgan has been speaking to those, some of those in the worst affected areas of Wales. The sound will never ever leave me. It was just heartbreaking to hear my daughter screaming. Just before lunchtime in Newport, South Wales, Holly Price's house buckled under pressure from Storm Eunice, all as five-year-old daughter Olivia was playing upstairs. Open the door, I could see all the highs of the, you know, the roofs were hanging off and I grabbed my daughter and managed to grab any clothes that we could that we had on and just take her outside. Three homes condemned for now on this street, but thankfully nobody was injured. Elsewhere, the seaside town of Porthcawl also felt the impact, the majority of its coastline businesses having to shut. The seafront here in Porthcawl really bore the brunt of the weather here this morning as within an hour of the red warning coming into force, it coincided with high tide, meaning the waves came crashing over the promenade here. I've lived in Porthcawl many, many years and I've never experienced it like this before. It's it's even taken my breath away, it's so windy. Stronger than I've seen for a long time. You know, the lack of rain is, is a big help, but uh, I haven't seen the wind as strong as this for a while. At its peak this morning, gusts of over 90 miles per hour were clocked as Eunice turned over anything and everything in its path. For the first time ever today, all trains were cancelled as a precaution. Most schools also made the decision to close. Half term started a day earlier than planned. Over 40,000 homes have been without power across the country. And although the Met Office's red warning ended lunchtime, the whole of Wales is now under an amber alert for wind until this evening. And the advice remains to stay indoors and to only travel if absolutely necessary. Thomas Morgan, BBC News, South Wales. Well, in London, parts of the O2 Arena, the former Millennium Roof, uh, Millennium Dome roof, was ripped off in London. Lucy Sloman was one of those evacuated. Lucy, thank you very much for talking to us about this. Um, a few hours on, you probably kind of calmed down a bit about what was happening. But uh, what was it like at the time? What happened? Yeah, so at the time, I was shopping with my parents um, in the O2 outlet and suddenly we heard a really loud bang, um, almost like a crashing sound. Um, and then within a couple of seconds, um, the banging continued um, and we look, came out of the shop and looked up to see that the panels of the um, O2 roof had ripped apart. Um, at first, it was quite a small rip in the mm. roof, um, but within seconds, the rip was continuing um, and it was just getting bigger and bigger. Um, at first, the security guard was just ushering us out. And then within a few seconds, there was an announcement to say we all had to evacuate the O2 immediately. Um, so we evacuated. And as we were coming out of the O2, we looked up to see the material was flying around. It went into the river um, and it was really fright frightening and quite scary. I can imagine it was. What, what, was, what was the reaction from people around you? At first, I think everyone was quite shocked. Um, we were just all looking at the roof um, and then people started running running away from, from it um, and running out of the O2. 
I suppose the difficulty in a situation like that is you, you don't quite know where is the safest place to be. Yeah, and I feel um, the security guards at first, they didn't know quite what to mm. do. Um, it was quite a shock it all happened so quickly um, and then we were all ush ushered out um, immediately but was there quite a lot of stuff flying around outside yeah the material the material was flying around outside and lots of um, dead debris and um, other other things were flying around so it was very scary hey, Lucy I think we saw some of your pictures uh, right at the start there and obviously now we've got some other camera camera crews have been down there as well during the course of, of the afternoon um I mean, it, how, how did, I just wanted to try to get a sense of what it was like. How did it sound? The sound was, it was really, really loud when you were inside. Um, felt like the material was flapping up and down, um, really loud inside. And then as we came outside, obviously you could hear the strong wind um, and you could al also hear the material flapping and ripping apart. Had you sort of kind of, sort of had any doubts about your shopping trip this morning, given, given the forecasts and so on? So when we left this morning, it was actually quite calm. So we thought we would be safe inside the shopping centre. Um, but we obviously thought wrong um, and we got the tube back, back straight away and came back, back home. Mum and Dad all right? Yeah, I think they were very frightened as well. They came up to visit me from Devon. Um, so we thought a day out in the O2 shopping centre, but it ended very early. I, I, I was going to say, I'll tell you, I, I'm from Devon and uh, you, you, you will know if you've grown up there as well. We get some pretty cracking storms, particularly along the coast, but we don't usually lose too many, too many roofs on big public buildings like that. It's kind of pretty scary experience, I should imagine. Yeah, definitely. I think, yeah, coming up to London and having the storm like that in London was, was very scary and quite frightening. Yeah, they'll be, they'll be glad to be back in the country when they get the chance. Um, Lucy Sloman, thank you very much. Glad all is well with you and your family. And uh, no one else was injured, which is, which is the really most important thing. But it's probably going to be a bit of an expensive job to repair. Thanks so much for talking to us and for letting us see your pictures. Thank you. Lucy Sloman there. Well, Storm, Storm Eunice has also caused travel chaos across the UK. Planes have struggled to land at airports and gale force winds brought trees down on rail lines. Our correspondent Emma Simpson has been looking at the in fact. Travelling into a storm, stomach churning landings from the skies. The going's rough for this car ferry too. On the roads, the wind too strong for this lorry and chaos on the rails. A roof lands on the tracks at Banbury. The disruption from Storm Eunice has been far and wide. Even before the storm hit, all train services in Wales were cancelled. Here's why. Carmarthen station roof on the platform. Services in the southwest badly disrupted too. Every train operator in England's been dealing with delays and cancellations. Disruption on the scale is almost unprecedented. There are trees down all over England and Wales. We've got thousands of colleagues out working with chainsaws and other specialist kit, desperately trying to get the railway open as quickly as we can. It's lunchtime here at London's Waterloo station. Trains were running and then suddenly every service has been suspended and every train en route has been told to pull into the nearest stop until the worst has passed. So we're not going home by train today, no. This group's trying to get home to Portsmouth after a birthday trip. <laughs> well, I was supposed to come to uni this morning, but they uh, sent an email 20 minutes before the lecture saying uh, that there's no uni. So um, I'm here for no reason and now I can't get home. <laughs> At Gatwick Airport, some planes aborted landings. Across the UK, more than 450 flights have been cancelled today. Jane Anson was en route here, but didn't make it. The pilot came on again and said that there were no places to land in any of the other London airports. It wouldn't be possible to land there. They considered um, Amsterdam, but that was closed. They considered Edinburgh, but they said it was so snowy up there. So we turned around and came back to Bordeaux. At Dover, ferry crossings also closed. The last boats to beat the storm tugged in to safety. As Storm Eunice passes through with all its force. Emma Simpson, BBC News.
Well, I'm joined now by the BBC's weather presenter, Ben Rich. Uh, ben, just why was this storm so powerful? Well, it really was every bit as powerful and as damaging as anticipated. The strongest wind gust at Needles on the Isle of Wight, 122 miles per hour, provisionally the strongest wind gust ever recorded in England. But plenty of other places had their strongest winds in 15 or 20 years. Now, the warnings for this storm came before it had even begun to form. But what's happened over the last several days is we've been watching this stripe of cloud on the satellite picture a wave on that weather system picked up by a strong and powerful jet stream the winds high above our heads blowing at more than 200 miles per hour deepening that storm explosively injecting energy into it and propelling it in our direction but uh, Eunice arrived quickly. It is clearing quickly now, clearing out into the near continent. For us this weekend, more weather systems pushing in from the Atlantic. There'll be more wet and windy weather, but it is not going to be as bad. It's still going to be wet and windy, not as stormy as it has been, but it is likely to hamper clear up operations after Storm Eunice, a storm that is likely to live on in the memory. Ben, thank you very much. Back now to our main story, Storm Eunice. And as the worst of the storm hit Britain, tens of thousands were glued to Big Jet TV, a live YouTube stream of planes trying to land at Heathrow, as David Silito has been finding out. It has been, shall we say, an interesting day to be an air passenger flying into Heathrow. Easy, easy, easy. Go on, son. Oh. And watching it all, and providing a live commentary on the extraordinary skills being displayed, Big Jet TV Live. It has been a day to marvel at the skills of pilots as they've navigated these extraordinary winds, and following it minute by minute, there's been Jerry here on Big Jet TV. It's been quite a day. This cockpit footage from Qatar Airways. 200,000 watched touchdown at the third attempt. Bosh! And in the cabin of this BA flight, you can feel the relief. Very, very skilled individuals. This is where their training and their years of experience, even some, well, I'll say years of experience, some of them are sprogs, aren't they? They're young pilots who haven't, uh, who haven't been um, flying for very long, um, but, uh, you know, they, they do a great job. Crabbing, looking in crabbing, man. Crabbing, vectoring. Jerry's new viewers have been introduced to all sorts of new terms on a day when pilots have truly proved their mettle and one that many passengers won't forget in a hurry. David Solito, BBC News, Heathrow. Oh, yeah! oh. oh, hard to watch. That's it from us now on BBC One. It's time for the news where you are. Have a very good night. Bye-bye.